This notebook studies NDVI phenology. This is the calculation of vegetation growth over time. And it's very common that you use NDVI or one of the vegetation indices. In this case, we've used NDVI. In the future, we'll be adding the Enhanced Vegetation Index EVI to this notebook. If you'd like to find out more about uh, phenology, please visit the website link that we have. And it takes you here to a USGS website that tells you a little bit about phenology and what it means. So let's walk through the code here and our notebook. First off, we always start at the top of our data cube code with suppressing warnings. Uh, for those of you that are not troubleshooting, uh, we load up the data cube infrastructure and some algorithms that we might need for calculations and then the data cube API. That gets everything set for the data cube. The next thing we want to do, anywhere you see in the code where it says change here, this is an area where that you can, as a user, you can change the content for your own purposes. So in this case, this particular code can run Landsat 7 and 8 simultaneously. If these are both set to true, then they'll use both data sets. If you want to only use one data set, set one of them to false. This particular case, we've chosen Tanzania to be our cube, and you can choose any one of the cubes listed. The first thing the code does is it goes out and gets the coordinates. It shows us that our Landsat 7 latitude and longitude bounding box and the time window. That way we make sure that we choose a analysis case that fits within the bounds. Here's where you define the extents of the analysis. Again, this is a change here block. So you want to look at the start point. This is year, month, and day and the end point, year, month, and day. So this is running 2015, 16, and 17, and 18 through this analysis. This is the latitude and longitude boundaries of the analysis region. So this is a grassland area over Tanzania. We put in the latitude range, the longitude range, and then the next thing plots out and visualizes where that scene is. And what you can see is we've chosen a cropland here in Tanzania. And if you zoom in, it looks like some croplands. So you can do this on your own and you can pick your your own location. Again, if you want to change location, you can zoom in, zoom out on this larger plot. You can take any area that you want and you just use your cursor to click around and it tells you the latitude and longitude. So it's best to just pick top left, lower right, write down those coordinates, and that's how you can change your output your input uh, region. The next thing is we go through some of the calculations. So it loads in the data cube, it loads in the bands that we want, it calculates an NDVI, and then it goes forward with a plotting routine. So if you see here, here's another case where we can do a change here. We can specify whether we want to pl plot the Gaussian fit or not. When we get to the bottom, I'll show you what's meant by the Gaussian fit. And then finally, this is the more complicated part of this algorithm where we change some data. The only thing we change is actually this piece of information right here where it says month of year. We have four choices. We can use week, month, week of year, or month of year. This particular one is month of year, and let's look at what the result is. And this is the end of the notebook. This result is taking all of the pixels that you see in that scene, and in the month of January, for all of the Januaries in year 2015, 16, 17, and 18, it's compiling all that data into a box and whisker plot where this line here is the median, first uh, the quartiles here, that's your the corner quartiles and your outer quartiles, and you then connect the medians with a curve fit. This is the Gaussian fit of the median points. So what this does is it gives you a phenological curve that shows you the growth of that region over time in terms of its vegetation. So what do we mean by the phenology? I've taken a few uh, charts from on, online. So let me pull those up right now. And what you see here is uh, basically our concept, which has a median point and then a box and whisker that represents the range of the data. This is a phen phenology curve over a day a year where it might have been a weekly one. And you can see there was two sort of growing cycles here. There was a, a green up in the spring and a green up in the in the fall. And then you can see a second period of time where there's been a shift in the green up periods. 
So what you typically do with these phenology curves is people want to know what is the start of season, what is the end of season, which is typically the inflection points in these curves, or, or where they start to move upward, the peak part of the season, uh, this is peak vegetation, and then somewhere in this point is you know where we've we've done the planting, and this is where we've done the harvesting, and so depending upon your application, this is important information. So let's go back to the curve, and we're going to try to change a few elements. Now remember, once this has run a single time, and I've already run it once, if I want to change just the end, all I need to do is rerun this block. So instead of month of year, I'm going to put in week of year, and I'm going to hit shift enter, and that is going to rerun just the block here for week of year. So now I have the same phenological curve, but instead I have week of year, and you can start to see a lot of variations weekly. So what happens in the dry part of the year, um, when there's not a lot of growing, there's, there's very little variation in the phenology. Here there's quite a bit of variation because these box and whisker plots um, go out quite, quite differently. What if I just, instead of week of year, compiling by year, if I just put in the week and hit shift return, this is now going to span the entire time period and it's going to show a weekly compilation of the entire time period. So here is year one, here is year two, here is year three. You can see that in all of the years the bottoms are relatively the same, but in uh, some of the other years, some of the peaks, uh, this particular year was a, was a bit different. There was probably some rain in here, some cloudy scenes, or some big time gaps, and you can start to use this. What if I went instead of week, I go to month, and here's the same thing monthly. So you can start to see some phenological changes from year to year. You can plot this for multiple years, or you can compile it as I did in the beginning from month of year, all of the years brought together in one single plot uh, using a um, box and whisker. So again, you if you want to change this region, you can see I have some other areas here where I have a different Tanzania grassland. I have a coffee farm in Tanzania, all of which will produce slightly different results, and you should try those on your own. Thank you.